What the focal? Oh, it's a podcast. All right, this is the intro. What is up, focal friends? This is Sierra, and welcome back to What the Focal, the only photography podcast made by non photographers where we interview industry experts to hear from their stories and learn from their experiences. On this week's episode, we're joined by the amazing Keith Riley. So, welcome, Keith. We're so excited to have you on the podcast today. Why don't we start by you just telling me a bit about yourself, where you're from, all the basic details? <laughs> sure. Uh, my name's Keith. Uh, I'm a photographer operating out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, I guess I, where I'm from, I grew up on the Jersey Shore. Uh, I went to school in New Jersey, um, then spent some time in New York City before I moved out here to Amish country. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Perfect. Well, uh, why don't you tell me a bit about how you got started in photography? Uh, when you started? Um, yeah, all that. Sure. Um, so I think there's like two errors. There's <laughs> the, the childhood era where mm -hmm. I uh, just like, as a kid, I loved disposable cameras and taking pictures. I have this very specific memory of being at like Universal Studios and they had these like matte paintings that you lined up with the physical structure to make it look like there was like an epic vista happening above it. Um, and so I, I was just in love with that and taking pictures with disposable cameras. Um, and then probably in high school, I got too cool for that <laughs> or too big and was dragged into playing football and all that stuff. Um, and so then like through college, there was this whole period of time where I like now looking back, it's so clear that I wanted to do photography. Um, but I didn't know it. I kept mm -hmm. uh, buying my girlfriend, now wife, cameras for Christmas because <laughs> I wanted to play with them. Um, I did that like at least three or four times. <laughs> um, and so, you know, eventually the, the iPhone came along and I suddenly I had a camera with me all the time. And I was like, you know, an early adopter of Instagram and doing all that stuff. Um, and now I look at those photos and I'm like, oh my God, they're so terrible. But, you know, I was really learning that visual language uh, through that. And then um, I'd say about five years ago, I was like, you know, enough people have told me I'm pretty good at taking pictures. I'm going to buy my first camera. And so I just started as a hobbyist. Mm. Um, I bought my first camera, started taking pictures of everything. Everything was the coolest thing to take a picture <laughs> of, which is so funny to think about now. Um, and then I'd say, well, then um, my day job was shut down because of the pandemic, like mm -hmm. a lot of people. Uh, I work in live events um, as a day job. And so with no live events happening, I needed something to do. Um, so I leaned into the hobby. Uh, I started doing um, porch sessions with families around Lancaster and just taking mm -hmm. pictures as like I guess I was like thinking I would document it and like maybe that would be something cool to look at after the fact and then I'll never forget like the third or fourth person was like how much how much does this cost and I was like I had never thought of charging for this so uh, I'm really flattered um but that's kind of where it started. Uh, and then one thing led to another. I second shot a wedding, fell in love with that process. And here I am now. So was a lot of your photography um, startup word of mouth and just kind of getting your name out there? Or did you market yourself in any way in the beginning? Yeah, I would say it's been mostly word of mouth. Um, marketing for me has only been a recent thing and I'm still working mm. on that and figuring <laughs> that out but almost all of my work has come from uh recommendations yeah. uh friends of friends uh for families I feel like I found um I don't know why it's a mining uh reference in my mind but like a vein of moms that really <laughs> my work and so like that one mom referred me to another mom referred me to another mom and and now every October, they all call me uh, for, for updated family photos. You've got an in with the moms. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't expect it, but it's really cool. 
Um, so are you still working that day job that you mentioned? So are you like this is um, kind of like duo careers? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, so yeah, I still work as a project manager for a company that builds scenery for live events. Mm -hmm. um, and then photography is the, the second career. Um, and it's been fun to try to balance those things as photography grows alongside this especially yeah. since my day job can be more than a full-time job at times. Oh my, um, yeah. What is it like to balance that? Uh, it's a lot of calendar work. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm definitely always double and triple checking my uh, Outlook calendar to make sure I haven't double booked myself or created a conflict. Um, a lot of communication with my day job and they've been great and supportive of uh, allowing me time to do these things. Um, so it's a lot. Um, I, I think this year I've done a lot of uh, workations uh, mm. where I've traveled to um, weddings around the country uh, and then using the revenue from those weddings to kind of pay for the trip, yeah. uh, as you will, um, which is nice. Um, also builds the portfolio. And now I seem like I'm a destination photographer, even though that's not really my intent. Um, it's just, it's just a nice, uh, a nice outlet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see yourself ever taking on photography full time or do you really like having it split between your two careers right now? Um, I don't know that I think it will ever take over full time, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to uh, write it out. I think uh, in the the episode with Lindsay, she was talking about how she just worked both jobs as much as possible until one made themselves obvious and undeniable. Yeah, uh, I think I'm on that track. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say photography can't be my full time job. Um and I'm not going to stop it from being my full-time job, but it's not necessarily, ne necessarily the goal. Right. You're kind of just seeing how it unfolds. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Um, so when you were in university and clearly you ended up choosing a different career path, did you ever, did you ever think photography could be a possibility or did you have like a certain career path in your mind when you were in college that you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to head towards. Was it event planning? Uh, <laughs> that's such a good question. Um, so <laughs> I started at a, I started at a community college cause I had absolutely no idea what I wanted <laughs> to do. Uh, I just, uh, I knew, or at the time I thought you have to go to college. You have to have to go to college. Um, I'm glad to see that that mind shift, mindset is shifting over time. Um, I found theater uh, at that community college uh, sort of by accident, and that became my passion for the next almost 20 years. Um, mm. And so that's kind of what I wanted to do. And I, I guess if you asked me when I was at university what my goal in life was, it was probably to work on Broadway. Oh, wow. Um, or do, yeah, absolutely. Um, so like make the New York thing happen and live, <laughs> live that sort of show business lifestyle or go on tour or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, while I was trying to make that happen uh, in New York, it's very expensive yes. and, and and incredibly difficult. And what I didn't know then that I know now is um, it's kind of hard to break into those Broadway houses. The The people mm -hmm. who work there have been working there for generations right. and, and it's established and right, wrong or different. That's just the way it is. So it's really hard to break in. Um, and then one night I was, um, I was working in Central Park. I was pushing a box uh, around the Great Lawn, um, making incredible money, like the dumbest amount of money I've ever made in my life per hour for doing literally just pushing a box. And I'm like, this is great, but I am more than a box pusher. Mm -hmm. um, I can definitely do better than this. And then um, my, my best friend at the time who works with me still to this day at my day job. Um, he was like, you, you should come out. You should come out. This thing out here in Lancaster is awesome. Um, you should do that. So 
Yeah, to answer your question, it's a long way to go. I never thought photography could be a full-time profession and it like never entered my mind. Mm -hmm. And I wish it had mm -hmm. um, because I definitely would have chased it, um, especially when I was younger. Now it's like, ah, I wish I was 10 years younger and just starting out, this would be awesome. But um, <laughs> it's still awesome. Uh, yeah. Age is not a reason not to pursue your dreams. Yes, I love that. Yeah. Um, with this background of, you know, loving the theater and also your background, you know, like event planning, like you mentioned, how do you think that has helped your career in photography or propelled it in any way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think my ability to deal with stress is <laughs> one of the things that, I, so like actual real life scenarios where I've had millions of dollars worth of scenery like on the line overhead yeah. and things are not working perfectly um and that is a stressful moment in my yeah. life uh if your your kid doesn't want to smile for the camera and they're being sort of obstinate stress-free I like <laughs> it could it doesn't even register on my meter so I think that um that ability to kind of stay calm Mm -hmm. in the moment yeah. um, is super helpful. And then I also think just having a great sense of like in theater, is, there's this idea of the fourth wall and you're kind of always worried about the audience's experience. And I, I think about that when I'm taking pictures mm. um, that the guest's experience is almost just as important as the photo that I could capture. And so I kind of want to get in and out of certain scenarios and make sure that people are having a good time and not disrupted by my work. Um, mm -hmm. That's really important to me is to make sure that it feels easy and smooth. Um, so those are, those are the two things that most cross contaminate each other. Yeah. I think that's like a good experience to have, especially that like awareness of, um, what the experience is like because more and more when I talk to photographers I understand that um, the experience seems to be just as important as the actual photos that they get because if they're happy with the photos but they don't have a good memory of the day it's not worth anything really. Absolutely I, I think the experience is the product mm -hmm. at the end of the day like um, taking great photos um, is a skill that a lot of people can learn. Um, making sure people are having a great time is more difficult. Yeah, I 100% agree. Um, so when you're taking your photos, you sound like you do a big mix of family photography and wedding photography. What is the, the percentage of both? How much do you do of either? Are you wanting to change that up, move towards one direction? Such a good question. Um, I, I feel like I want to lean more into wedding photography mm -hmm. than family photography right now. Um, I love wedding days. There, there's nothing else like a wedding. Um, it, it gives me that same feel as like an opening day for a, for, for a mm -hmm. theater. Mm -hmm. Like, um, because it's a once in a lifetime experience. And, yeah. and so it has that specialness to it. Um, I really enjoy doing family photography. Like I love working with families and, and kids. Like it brings me great joy. Um, I'm, I am finding it difficult to repeat customers and give them something new each mm. time we, we go out to shoot. Um, so it, it's not something where I would stop shooting with the families who've already found me, the moms who already love me and, and want me to keep taking their pictures. Uh, but I think that I need to lean a little bit more into weddings and advertising for weddings and doing that. Um, it was, it's also a little bit easier to balance sort of a singular day of shooting a wedding with my day job and um, mm. whereas families tend to be a little bit more sporadic and mixed in and I have to be very flexible with them right yeah that makes sense so when you uh, describe your photography style how do you describe it that's a it's a funny question I I don't know that I have um concrete 
terms for it. I, mm. I, I'm definitely not light and airy. I can, I can say <laughs> that. That's not light and airy. But I don't, also don't think I'm like dark or broody or dramatic or anything mm. like that. Um, I'd say there's definitely a heavy use of vignetting. Um, I think that comes from like a love of like spotlights and drawing attention yeah. to very specific moments. Um, I guess the best thing to call it would be documentarian style. Like mm. I, I try to capture the truth of the moment, um, right. but I'm also willing to lean into um, the creativity of the moment and, and do something a little bit more artistic if that's what's called for. Um, so yeah, I, you, I, as I said, I, I don't know if I can give it like a nice yeah. short, like <laughs> clickbaitable title. All good. I was just curious. Um, I'm cu always curious how people describe their own, what they like, what they drift towards when they shoot. Um, but have you ever done creative shoots or um, what have they looked like? Um, I, I have not set out specifically to do a creative shot, mm -hmm. but occasionally uh, for a wedding couple, I'll have an idea ahead of time of what could look really cool or like lean into that more creative side. So I had a couple who got married at the PA Ren Fair uh, mm -hmm. recently, and they were both dressed up in costume. And I had just this idea because there's often a crowd there that's like, kind of constantly moving and I just really wanted to like lock in on them kind of standing still in that crowd mm -hmm. um so I, I I did that and I used the like the motion blur of the people moving by so it was a little bit of a slower uh, shutter speed just to kind of again highlight them against the crowd and how special they were specifically mm -hmm. um and to celebrate their love on that day so that that's an example of the type of stuff that I'm um, willing to do um yeah other times it's just i, I don't know uh, i think sam hurt has definitely become a major uh mm. influence on my style recently um so i've definitely leaned into some of those more artistic kind of approaches right so going back to what you said about being a documentary photographer do you pose people a lot because that sounded like a posing one but when i think of documentary i i don't yeah. necessarily think about posing absolutely i don't try to pose people unless it's something mm. very specific like that where i have a very clear vision of what i'm trying to create um more often than not i'm i will give like actions or like ask people to do things uh, like, you know, walk or look at each other or look away from each other. Um, I try not to be as specific as what to do with your hands or where to place things unless you're doing something incredibly distracting um, and, and need that, that sort of adjustment. Um, it's not that I'm uncomfortable posing people. It's just that I, I, I wanted to feel more natural mm -hmm. um, and more inspired by the moment. I really like, I love capturing candidates. Uh, obviously that's lightning in a bottle and you're not always going to get it. Um, and you have to be able to reasonably recreate something that feels candid, um, which I, I feel like I can do. Um, but yeah, that that's the answer. So no, I try to avoid uh, posing as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I feel like I learned that on like my very first family shoot, I tried to <laughs> rearrange the family and make them do something. And it just felt completely unnatural. Mm. And then when they just kind of fell into their own natural rhythms and like behaviors around each other, that's when the picture kind of came together. And I could, I could see them as a family in that moment. Mm, and they probably all felt a little more comfortable that way as well, uh, which definitely. is probably definitely shown in the photos. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What do you think sets your photography business apart from other photography businesses? Um, that's probably the hardest question to answer. <laughs> um, I, I would say my, like, my calm Mm, calming yeah. effect on people which is really hard to market I find yeah <laughs> um, I, but I it's true I feel like um my ability to put people at ease and make them feel comfortable in front of the camera is something that I, I feel com confident in um I'd also say 
um, my flexibility. I don't know. I have a big laugh, <laughs> a <laughs> winding laugh. I don't know. I I really like that one about like kind of being the calm because I feel like so many people get stressed out by photos. They don't like their photos. So it's something that's so necessary. You can't, I feel like you can't approach photography being just as nervous as the people in front of the camera. Because it's Absolutely. not going to go well. <laughs> and it's, it's totally reasonable. Like it is an unnatural thing yeah. most of the time to pose for somebody in front of a camera. And I try to uh, smooth that out as much as possible and get people comfortable and and remind them that I won't show them any of the bad <laughs> photos unless they are absolutely hilarious and they need to see how funny they are. I I hide all the terrible photos. Uh, they so only see worry. the good ones. <laughs> Truth. What are five things that you cannot leave the house without when heading to a wedding or family shoot? Um. I would say, so for weddings specifically, you have to have water and snacks mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Um, recently, I've been putting myself in the habit of always making sure I have a lens cloth, um, not necessarily for my cameras, but I've gotten into this habit of like, people will pose for each other with cell phones, like they'll bring each other together. And I try to like spot this. Uh, in, in the wedding party and I'll go over and like sort of um, rag them a little bit or tease them and then offer to take the photo myself. And then the thing that always gets a laugh is when I take out the lens cloth and wipe down the iPhone lenses. <laughs> Cause inevitably they've been in somebody's pocket and they're all smudged or, oh, yeah. you know, you gotta but clean that lens off to get a better picture. And this always makes people laugh. So that's, um, that's definitely gone into the top five. Um, that is so true, though. Like, they're just so dirty all the time. <laughs> oh, all the time. All the time. You, Without you fail. Yeah, you can always spot it because you'll bring it up and you'll see, like, a light in the background and it's just a big smear. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> As I'm talking your where lenses, you're probably like... <laughs> oh, 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 I can't. I can't. Yeah, so uh, lens cloth. Big, big positive. Um, yeah. And then beyond that, I mean, I've got my my on camera flash. I think uh, is become a really important part of my kit. Mm. Um, extra batteries uh, and extra uh, memory cards. I know that sounds like really rudimentary, but I have a specific memory of one of the early family shoots I did where my battery ran dead. Oh, and I didn't no. have a spare on me. Oh, my spare no. was also dead. And I was like, I am, I am so sorry. Uh, can I run home? <laughs> like, do you have time for me to run home, get my camera, get my battery and come back? And they were like, yeah, absolutely. Like, they were so kind in that moment. But seriously, always making sure I have a, a spare, charged spare batteries and a charger with me, uh, mm. just in case. The one thing, good thing though, is that only needs to happen once for you to like be like, okay, oh, I'm yeah, always yeah. gonna. <laughs> Lesson learned. Yeah. I am never gonna let that happen again because that was terrifying. And at least it happened uh, when you were close enough to go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, close enough to go home and early enough in my career that it wasn't like, oh my god, I'm calling myself a professional and I didn't have a spare battery. What the heck? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a pay what you will family session and they were super kind about it and I'll, I'll never forget that. So kind of going on the same note, uh, how do you prepare yourself for the weddings? Is it the night before, a couple days? What's that process look like? Um, so it definitely starts the night before. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely have a ritual of charging my batteries, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> making sure my memory cards are clear and ready to go, have all the gear uh, packed up into my bag, um, make sure that's ready to go. I will probably um, do some like inspirational video watching, like I'll watch um, some, some of our YouTube friends, uh, you know, Taylor and Sam and just get some inspiration um, and I'll start thinking about what I want to focus on the day, the next day. Um, and then in the morning, it's, it's really important for me to go through my like kind of daily morning routine. I have a usual breakfast I get from a local coffee shop. I 
go and do that. Um, and then I like the other thing I like to do is make sure I'm there as early as possible um, without being like overly early. Mm. Um, this actually saved my butt recently. I, I had, was second shooting for a wedding um, and I had it in my phone a million years prior. I looked, I'm like, eh, I'm not doing anything. I'll get there an hour early. I've never been to this venue before. It'll be great. I didn't notice that they had changed the time, the start time. So getting there an hour early meant I got there right on time. Oh. And that has saved my butt so many times uh, throughout my life. So being perpetually early is mm. just um, a really important thing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So those, I would say that's my ritual pretty much. Yeah. And I think that's a good note for like people to take is like being early is the being on time. Oh my God. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there was a saying uh, when I was in university that was 15 minutes early is on time. On time is late and late is unacceptable. Yeah. And I still try to live by that as much as possible. I think that's a great rule just for anyone to live by. <laughs> yeah. It, that, that is interdisciplinary, a good yeah. idea. Always yeah. be a little bit early. Yeah. yeah. 100%. When you think back to some of the weddings or the family shoots that you've shot, uh, what are one of your favorite moments that like sticks in your brain? I, I don't like to call this a favorite moment, mm -hmm. um, but it is one that is definitely stuck in my brain. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting with the bride um, and we were waiting for like the next thing to come up. I, I think it was like just before the ceremony and she was drinking some water. And like I put my camera down I blink, I open my eyes, and she has blood splattering across her, her dress. She had picked a scab on her arm, oh, and no. it just opened up and right across. And then the maid of honor saint that she is, like, pulls out a Tide pen immediately, like, and a Band-Aid. Like, Band-Aid's the scab, <laughs> and then starts Tide penning out. This. It was, like, what an amazing moment. Um, so He was prepared. Yeah, I, it, she was super prepared, uh, and I think I'm going to add a Tide pen to mm. five things I have to bring to a wedding. Yeah. Um, I think that that one sticks out. Um, and then beyond that, I I think there's been a lot of um, family shoots that involve pets. Mm. Um, and getting those pet shots with the families always, like, stick, like, really bright in my mind because they are hard. They're yeah, so hard. I can imagine. Uh, I, getting and it's it's often it's not just getting the pet to look at you but it's getting the family to also look at you at the same time I'm always <laughs> like just you all look at me I will take care of the dog everyone look at me right and, and but inevitably someone's looking at the dog yeah no everyone look at me I will get the dog um so those 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 shots are always like fun and yeah. stick in my head yeah because there's like few and far between they're like worth yeah, it. it. The, the gold yeah, shots. When you, when you nail it, it feels good. Yeah, I bet. Do you have um any funny moments that you remember specifically from any of your shoots? Man, funny. Not really. I mean, no? forgetting my battery for <laughs> not having a spare battery is a pretty good one. Yeah. Um. No, not really. I okay. mean. They're pretty chill and laid back. Yeah. So there we go. Um, you have mentioned on your website that one of your passions is to travel. Um, I just wanted to open it up and say, like, where are some of your favorite places that you've traveled? Uh, if you had to recommend some, where would you recommend? Maybe not so even related to photography, just your life and where you've gone. Yeah. Uh <laughs> Paris would probably be mm. top of that list. Paris was an amazing experience. Um, and I would highly recommend not just doing all the touristy things, like definitely do all the touristy things, do the Eiffel Tower, all of that, but just kind of walk around. Mm. Um, that was my favorite day when we were in Paris. We, we kind of, no itinerary, just kind of started meandering um, and ran into some really cool stuff and just, got the authentic feeling yeah uh, so Paris is high on the list um London 
Um, haven't been there in a minute, but I would really love to go back, especially if you're a theater lover. London is like, it's the best. Yeah. Um, man. And then I would say it's probably like Nashville or Austin, Texas are high on the list as well. Yeah. Uh, just because that like uh, live music vibe they have, uh, it's like, I think it's Second Street in Austin and Main Street in Nashville. I'm sorry if I'm messing that up. I'm sure I am. Um, but just the vibe of those cities with the music and the bars and, and just the liveliness. And especially in Nashville, like the art is just springing up from the ground. Like everywhere you go, everything is immaculate and beautiful and artistic and like so creative. Um, definitely a very inspiring city to go to. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Sedona, Arizona is gorgeous. Oh, Ma- yes. Like anytime I Anytime I can get into the, like the Rocky Mountain region of America, I'm very happy. Um, awesome. But yeah, I've, I've been a lot of places. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, have you had chances yet to do any destination weddings? Um, or is that like something you're interested in doing in the future? Uh, anything mm-hmm. like that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you could absolutely call them destination weddings Mm -hmm. um like i did a wedding in florida in jupiter which was on the beach which was super cool oh nice very very different than almost everything else in my portfolio i still have to get that uploaded um because i'm i just life has just started to calm down from the october yeah uh, november craziness of photography um i also shot in Salt Lake City, Utah, which was really cool, and um, Estes Park, which is in Colorado. So, um, been been around the U.S. a, a bunch. I, I would love to go anywhere. Literally, I will. As I said earlier, uh, I'm the king of vacation. If I can just barely make it make sense uh, financially, I'll pretty <laughs> much go anywhere to to shoot anything with you. So. So you are actively like trying to get into destination weddings then, or yeah. just kind of like watching how things progress? Yeah, I've kind of just been opportunistic about mm-hmm. it. Like when mm-hmm. the opportunity strikes, um, I wouldn't say I've, I've marketed it. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely something that I'm going to lean into more coming into 2023. Um, because I do, I love traveling. And the only thing, like, if we, if I can mix travel with wedding photography, like I don't see anything that could possibly be better than that. Right. Um, it's like I I don't know. I call me crazy. I love getting on airplanes, going yeah. places, traveling with my gear. Like the challenges of the logistics and all of that, and then yeah, getting to see new places, meet new people. My favorite things. Right. That probably bumps up to like dream job level. Uh, Absolutely. Dream (laughs) job level. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So when you look back on the past five years of your photography career, was there a moment where you really felt like, okay, yes, I have made it as a photographer. I can call myself a professional photographer now. Um. There's probably been many moments, but the one that's sticking out in my mind right now, it's actually funny. Um, I joined this bit of a mastermind group here in Lancaster. It was me and three other women who have photography businesses. I was just kind of the new person sucking in all the knowledge, right? Yeah. Um, And I think it was like the second year of that where I was like, I was expressing some doubt in myself and um, Emily, who is like kind of the old vet and not old, but she was the veteran of the group. She was like, Keith, you're a photographer. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing with the camera. Stop it. You're a photographer. And I, I don't know why in that moment, that little bit of a smack in the face, not literally, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you know, like just stop it uh, really helped me move forward and be like, yeah, no, I am. That's you're right. I do a good job. I, I give people a great experience. That's it. So um, that sticks out. Otherwise, I guess I'm always fighting a little bit of imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Only because I, I don't do this necessarily full time. Um, so there's always just a little bit of doubt in my mind. But I think that's good. I, like, 
it helps drive me forward and try to get better and make sure that I am providing a really great service. Right. So kind of on the imposter syndrome and feeling like that, was there ever um, a moment where you wanted to quit uh, or that you were like really upset with your photography career, didn't think it could progress any further and you were just done? Um, there are definitely moments of doubt. I, I mm. think that every, every winter comes along and yeah. it gets quiet and I don't necessarily know what I'm doing next year. And mm -hmm. I'm like, did it dry up? Like, is it, did it just evaporate? Right. Mm. Um, and then of course, like another, another project will come along. And then before I know it, I have too much on my hands and I'm doing <laughs> too much. And I'm like, why do I have two careers? Uh, um, <laughs> So I wouldn't say there was ever a moment where I was absolutely like, I need to give up, give up. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, have been moments where I'm like, why both, is it, is it still happening? Am I still doing this? And why am I doing this to myself? I have too much work to do. <laughs> <laughs> so. What is, um, what is the motivation be behind like sticking with it and just keep going? Um. I just love it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like it was really, really what it comes down to is um as tired as I can get any mm -hmm. given moment. Um, I I love it. Like I will find the energy to to say yes to another second shooter gig um late in the season just because I like I I don't know how I could say no to it. It just it it feels like something I'm meant to do and it brings me such joy so yeah I might be physically tired but it feels I don't know it, it feels like going to the gym a little bit mm. where like you get that like yeah my body is sore yeah I'm tired but I've done a good thing and I feel yeah. really good about it um so I think it's that hopefully that's not just me masking being a glutton for punishment <laughs> uh, or being a workaholic, I, I don't know if I'm just justifying these things, but it, it I truly love it. And it really brings me a lot of joy. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, what is one thing that people are usually really surprised to find out either about you or about your photography business? Um, probably about me, but I am... Uh, a, a very large human. <laughs> I'm, like I am a big person. Um, I would look uh, perfectly in line with an offensive lineman for for football or something oh. like that. I'm a, a very big person. Um, so I think sometimes people like, especially in the digital age, if you've only ever met me on Zoom yeah. or somewhere online, uh, how big I am is sort of masked. Um, so I think that's one thing. Um, I think about the photography business, maybe just how sh like shorter career it's been so far. Yeah. Um, that I'm relatively new to this, uh, considering uh, all things considered. Um, so I think those are the two things. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure. I'd love to know. <laughs> I, it's like a question I'm gonna need to ask people more. Mm. Like, what are you surprised by? <laughs> but also too, I was thinking um, because yeah, I was thinking that hopefully there aren't too many surprises. Right. Like that's actually something that I, I try to pride myself in is not surprising people on the day of a shoot or of their wedding. Like being surprise free is actually kind of a good idea. Right. Unless like it's you, a good surprise. Yeah, you are exactly who they think you are. <laughs> Delivering yes, exactly the, what they want. <laughs> yes, yes. Or more. Yeah. I'm always better to, yeah. Better to over deliver. <laughs> Always, always, always. What were some of the challenges you faced when you were first starting your photography career? Um, well, it was a pandemic. So. Mm, oh, yeah. So you started <laughs> that, at the beginning was... of the pandemic then? Pretty much. I, I would say I gave myself a solid month of uh, wallowing and mm. sadness where I was like, theater is gone and I'll never be able to do live events again. And my whole like career was built up that what am I going to do? Um, so I think getting over that, um, but definitely doubting my own skill and talent was like one of the really hard things to, to overcome. Um, and now it's just 
gaining awareness. I, I think that's probably the hardest thing to do. It's a very noisy uh, world, and there are a lot of photographers out there who are all amazing and excellent. Um, so trying to find my little place in that in that niche and and spreading the word, I think the, that's the biggest challenge I face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that seems to be the thing that I hear a lot is quite difficult. It's just like finding your one place and finding the thing that sets you apart from other people. Because I feel like that takes yeah. a lot, a lot of um, self exploration to figure out yourself and then to market mm -hmm. it to other people. Yeah. And then how do you explain it um, yes. quickly and something that will connect with people that, and, it, and attract difficult. people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Well, we are actually moving on to our last question already, which I feel like this has just blown by our time here. It's blown by. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's been fun. Um, yes, it has been so fun. But if you were to give a piece of advice to yourself when you were just starting out, what would you have wanted to hear? Um, you're, you're right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, don't, like, seriously, go go after it. You're right. Uh, chase it down. Uh, don't worry so much about gear right mm. now. I think I, I spent probably a year researching what camera I was going to buy. Oh. <laughs> so, so silly. Just buy a camera and get started, right? Like, yeah. you'll figure out what's important and not important by working. And mm. um, so I think the, that would be important. Um, and then the other one is like, it's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. Uh, you're like, it's, it's not going to be some smooth, like smooth uh, crest upwards. Yeah. Where all it's, it's, it's a bumpy, windy road. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, Photography ebbs just and flows. <laughs> For sure, for sure. And, and it's just stay open to opportunities and, and say yes when the right things come along and mm -hmm. it'll work out. Right. So, but yeah, just getting started. I, like I, this is, I've been like really um, focused on this recently um, because I, I did, a, I, speaking of staying open to opportunities, I was um, able to shoot a, li a live events career day, which was very mm -hmm. surreal. Like being the photographer at an event yeah. that was about starting in the career that I had started 10 years or 20 years ago. Um, so like doing my second career at this, th it was very, anyway, everyone wants to know the same thing. Like, how do you get started? Where do you get started? And the, like, it's a trick question. It's, you have to just find a way to get started. Right. Right. Like, just make yourself available to it. Um, say yes to more things than you say no to at the start. Right. Because um, even 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 the bad experiences are important along the way. They're learning. learning experiences. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so just get started. That that's it. Don't yeah. don't overthink it. Just get started. I like that. That's something I haven't heard yet. Is just like start saying yes. Like try and just start going for it. Yeah, don't close absolutely. yourself off. Don't look for the perfect opportunity. So totally, I think that I, I like. I know I'm guilty of this, and I'm sure others are. Is we have all these great, um, like all these great teachers out there who like. There's a probably a million videos of like how to get started in a photography business. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2022, right? Um, and you will end up comparing yourself to the person who's giving you the advice, not realizing mm -hmm. they're like a 10 or 15 year veteran of the business, right? And yeah. you're like, well, I've got to be there before I get started. No, mm -hmm. no, you're not going to start at the end point. You're going to start where you start. Um, so just, you know, use the tools available to you to to start doing things and, and create some of your own opportunities. Um, that's like a really big lesson that I, I always forget to sometimes mm -hmm. is um, like, it's okay to do a style shoot to create the piece of content that shows people that you can do the thing you say you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, don't wait for it to come to you necessarily um, because people want a little bit of proof of burden. It's the, the classic, like, how do you get a, a job that needs experience if you have no experience? You yes. Know, it, yeah, you have to create those opportunities for yourself a little bit. 100%. And I really liked you, what you said about the kind of 
photography influencers. And one thing I think to keep in mind is when they started 10 years ago, their way to get their foot in the door is uh, so different to how you can get your foot in the door now. So you kind of have to take their teachings with a grain of salt, knowing that it's different approaching photography careers nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think those are great things for anyone to just keep in mind when starting out. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. We loved having you on. This was such an amazing chat. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Uh, You too. Happy Thanksgiving to those in the States. Yes, happy Thanksgiving. And I forgot to mention, um, Keith, would you like to plug yourself on your social medias, websites, anywhere people would like to find you if they would like to find you? Sure. Uh, So I'm KeithRileyPhotography.com. And then on both Facebook and Instagram, it's Keith Riley Photography. um, All one word. Um, And give me a give me a like and a follow if you uh, feel feel frisky. Yeah, perfect. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. Have a great rest of your day. You too, Sierra. Take care.